Hi guys, Steph here. Right, today we've got a very interesting pen to show you. Now for you eagle-eyed viewers, you would have seen me sort of teasing you slightly and showing you the pen here. Now if you blink, you'll miss it. And here's the pen in question. Now it's been fully restored, fully cleaned, everything internally has been cleaned it's a gorgeous fountain pen and what is it let's show you the barrel imprint okay it's a Mentmore ink lock fountain pen you can see it's got a couple of patent numbers there made in England okay so what we've got for you is a Mentmore ink lock fountain pen. Now, the Mentmore pens, this ink lock uh, model, if you like, I believe came in different um, sort of filling methods. I believe they brought out a lever filled ink lock. I believe they also brought a button fill ink lock fountain pen and this one as we'll show in a moment is I think well the best way to describe it is like a vacuumatic ink lock fountain pen very interesting pen I believe they may have come in different colors as well although this one is a marbled sort of greys black it's got little specks of red to it as well you can see to the barrel sorry to the cap there it's got this it's actually sort of a wider cap band and then a thinner one a rather unusual clip as you can see it's got this sort of like like a diamond to the end of the clip there there's a sideways view and to the very top it's got this peat finial which again matches the rest the rest of the barrel okay and to the bottom here it's got this blind cap that if we unscrew and pull out that's the filling system so although they did a lever fill a button fill this one I'm going to term it for all intents and purposes for this video is like a vacuumatic filler and this one I believe is quite a rare model now the nice thing about the Mentmore pens that they were a part of the Platinum family as well of that particular period and when I say period I'm talking sort of the 1920s 1930s although this particular pen I'm dating I don't know maybe sort of the second half of the 1930s and at that particular period the Platinum and Mentmore family the nice thing about it I think is that they were they were quite innovative if you like and experimental with regards to the filling system of the pens and a lot of the filling systems and the the new innovative sort of designs that they actually used of that period they patented now before I show you the pen further let me show you some of the things on this particular pen that they actually patented so as I said the pen has some interesting features some interested patented features now here's the pen well disassembled as I was working on the pen uh, you can see it's got the clip here uh, it's got the clip ring to the very top you've got the cap and you can see the barrel comes into two pieces now what are the interesting sort of patented features of this particular pen because it's an ink lock pen what, what does that mean um, well what it means is this is a finial that screws into the top of the cap and you can see it's got this this metal rod inside and what that rod does when you actually screw uh, the cap onto the pen itself 
underneath we've got the the feed now if I show you the feed it's a very interesting feed as you can see there it's got the ink well the ink feed or the channel here you can see is actually underneath and it goes to a little hole hopefully you can see it there and if I turn it over you can see the hole is at the top there now and the feed then carries on halfway up the top of the feed however underneath what you can see okay it's got these sort of quite you know quite a normal ladder feed but you can see to the center there it has a channel okay so the reason for the ink lock being is once you screw the cap back on inside the cap we've got this little rod and what happens is as you screw the cap back on this little rod there you go sits inside the channel there and in effect it it shuts off the ink hence the ink lock name so you can imagine again this is actually inside the cap itself the feed is already in the section in the pen so once you screw the cap off that's actually what happens inside and in effect it shuts off the ink and again I believe that's where the name ink lock comes from one of the other interesting patent patented features on this pen uh, you can see here I've already put a sack on it I'm not yet 100% sure whether that's actually the you know the correct length of sack and I need to do a little bit more homework but hopefully what you can see inside inside this section of the barrel and again if I bring on a light there we go I'm hoping that's you can see you can see it's got a lot of transparency to the barrel but inside there you can see it's got a breather hole okay you can see the sorry not the breather hole what am I talking about it's got a breather tube okay now I believe that breather tube it's obviously got a hole at the top of it and I believe there's actually a hole in the bottom which sort of equal equals the sort of the pressure outside and helps the the pen fill with ink okay so in effect what happens then is the end of the barrel or yeah the barrel actually screws back on like so to the end of the barrel we've got the sort of the plunger tube as you can see there so there you have it you see the pen you've got the nib obviously that speaks for itself but there you have it the pen has got a couple of interesting patented features which we've just shown you um, and hence as I said before the name being meant more ink lock fountain pen and again very interesting features on this pen so what we'll do now we'll put it all back together we'll try and find out if this is the correct length of sack if not we'll pop another one on and then we'll pop it all back together it's actually been cleaned already I've done all the cleaning on it but what I've not done is given the pen a polish so we'll polish everything and the end result hopefully should be a lovely lovely pen okay so after it actually disassembled and cleaned as I said this is the end result so what we do we unscrew the barrel like so let's show you the pen in a couple of different angles I don't know if you can see the rod that we was talking about before inside the cap but I'm hoping the disassembly was more than clear for you okay you can see the barrel there as we've showed you just before this particular section has got this lovely sort of transparency to it okay and as we said before it has this breather tube inside and in effect what happens 
we unscrew the blind cap we dip the sort of section and the nib in the ink and we press down on a couple of a couple of times and it creates a vacuum inside and that in turn fills the pen with ink now if I just reach down here and again as before show you the show you the transparency there because what we'll actually do we'll actually actually before I fill the pen one thing I've not actually mentioned to you the size of this pen capped is 129 millimeters capped around the barrel it's a nice chunky 12 millimeters in diameter okay so as I've just said let's bring on some ink okay and let's try and fill the pen so we dip it in the ink press down a couple of times and I believe it takes a few pushes I'm just trying to look over the camera and let's just see if we've got any ink in there so there we have it you can see we've got ink in the barrel there in fact I'm not very prepared today but let's move the ink to one side let's screw down the the blind cap for you bring that light again you can see we've got ink in there now there you go so as I said before it's like a vacuumatic filler now let me just blot some ink there I've got a little bit of ink on my paper here but what I'm going to do is bring on some paper let's see how the pen actually writes so oh dear I'm totally unprepared today everything's in my way so we've got a a memo ink lock fountain pen made made in England and as I say dating this one sort of late late 1930s or the second half of the 1930s it's actually writing very nicely very nicely indeed getting a little bit of railroad in there it's actually I think it's got a little bit of flex to it as well not a great deal but yeah, there's a little bit of variation in line there we go so a lovely writer I would say writing with a medium line a little bit of pressure we can get a little bit of variation although I'm not saying it's a full flexi nib so now if it was being used on a daily basis you've got ink in the barrel there so what you would do simply screw the cap back on until it stops there we go so at that point the rod that we showed you before would now be sat in that channel in the feed and in effect locking the ink how good is that so a very interesting pen with a couple of patented interested sort of fill, filling system and feed in absolutely gorgeous condition and in my opinion I believe it to be a rare pen there we have it I hope you've enjoyed looking at the pen 
as much as I enjoy showing them to you people. Don't forget, leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel, don't forget. And please don't forget, just below there, give the video a thumbs up to say that you've enjoyed the video. But, for now, I'm just going to say Slavo Krajini from me in this gorgeous, interesting pen. I'm just going to say bye-bye for now.